Hey, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today we're looking at some spy action. Agents of Smirsh, the Epic Edition, which is coming to Kickstarter soon from Everything Epic Games. And as always with our Kickstarter coverage, we accepted no compensation for this, we just want to show you the game, and I'm going to do a full solo playthrough, and then I'll give my thoughts and impressions on the game. You can use the timestamps to skip to any part of that. And if you like what you see here on the One Stop Co-op Shop, please consider subscribing, uh, supporting us on Patreon for some great perks like early access to our videos. Join the awesome conversations going on on our Discord channel. And check out our other content, our weekly podcast, and our second YouTube channel that focuses on streaming plays. So the basics of play for Agents of Smirsh are really straightforward. It's a fun choose-your-own-adventure spy game. And each player chooses their own spy. And they've got these really nice boards where you, like, slide the spy sheet in and then uh, just kind of, like, goes over it. So uh, nice-looking stuff. And your spy is going to give you your starting statistics in five basic skills. You can also get advanced skills from ten that are on offer that will help you in uh, the challenges you might face. You've got resolve, which is a resource you can spend to get bonuses to your rolls, move farther, that kind of thing. And you've got your health as you suffer injuries. You don't want to get down to zero or you uh, die, but hopefully that won't happen. And on an agent's turn, it's super straightforward. You can move up to two spaces and you can spend resolve to move extra spaces, one resolve per space. If you're on an airplane space, Space. For a single move, you can go to another airplane anywhere. And whichever space you end your move on is where you're going to have an encounter. And at some points during the game, you'll place these little intel tokens on enemy bases like that. And if you ever end your move on a space with one or more of those, then you get to collect them all into your group's kind of communal supply. Now the symbols for the spaces you stop on mainly apply to encounters. If a space has a symbol like these, that's a bonus you get if you successfully complete an encounter there. So you can like level yourself up with your basic skills or get gadgets and other fun things like that. These headquarters spaces mean that if you rest there, you uh, get all your resolve back. So basically you can heal more quickly. And then as I already mentioned, the airplanes let you move faster and the enemy bases let you get intel. Now in terms of the actual encounter, they're kind of the core of the game. Uh, you'll have these cards for the different continents and also ones just for the generic ocean. And there's a lot of stuff on here, but all that really matters is it'll tell you the kind of thematic title of the mission you're on under surveillance and give you a number. You make a choice. You can just uh, pick randomly, pick ones that sound fun to you, or pick ones that you think match your skills. Like maybe if my character's really like agile and stealthy, I'll pick escape. That'll give you a second number, so like six, one in that case. And then you roll a d6 die that'll give you a number one through five. There's also a resolve side that gives you extra resolve. So you'd be like six, one, four, and you'll read the entry in the book. And it'll give you some fun narrative to read. It'll tell you like what skill you have to test with and what happens if you pass or fail. And tests are pretty straightforward. You'll roll as many dice as your skill. Uh, sometimes you'll get bonuses or penalties. Uh, the little guns are a success. The little Illuminati symbol is a straight up failure. And these little lightning bolts are a possible success. You have to spend one resolve for each one you want to turn into a success. And resolve can also be spent to give you extra dice before you roll. One point per resolve spent. And one more small thing to give your character some guidance. You start with uh, two secret missions. And whenever you have an encounter in the specific city, so Berlin or Cape Town here, if you succeed, you get one of the two bonuses listed. If you fail, you just lose it. But either way, you discard the card and you'll draw a replacement one. So you always have two of these to go after. And by the way, if you don't want to move and have an encounter, you can take a rest turn instead. You gain your rest statistic, which is two for Nikita Romanova. Uh, in injuries healed, so like two would bring me up to there. And also you get that much resolve back as well. Although again, if you're on your headquarters, then you'll get all of it back. Now, how do you win the game? You pick a henchman to face off against. Right now I'm facing Darling, who is the easiest one because the prototype I was sent only has like the full materials for her, not the other ones yet. And it'll show you based on how many players in the game, how much intel you need to confront her. So besides just trying to level up, I'm trying to collect enough intel to have an encounter with her and hopefully defeat her. Then additionally, this little round tracker is moving every turn. By the way, when it reaches these little spaces, that's when you spawn intel in all those headquarters. And you also have this little Dr. Lobo token. Dr. Lobo is the leader of Smirsh, the evil <laughs> organization you're against. And at the end of any round in which you've passed Dr. Lobo's position, and this can go forwards or backwards, then you have to have a final showdown with him, which will determine whether you actually win the game or not. But uh, if you don't have all your stuff leveled up enough, you'll probably get crushed. So those are the basics. Let's get into the playthrough and have some spy fun. 
All right, so I did select Nikita Romanova for my solo game, although this can be played up to four-player co-op. She's good at athletics, average at a bunch of stuff, not good at persuading at all. She starts with the stealth advanced skill, something to keep in mind as I'm picking my options. And it says at the beginning of her turn, she can spend one resolve to draw a gadget card. And whenever she draws a gadget card, she draws two and picks one. So uh, let's jump right in and do that. Why not? All right, let's see. I've got a hack pack. I can spend one resolve to gain an intel. Or I can discard this before rolling dice to get plus one. Or a stun pen. Gain two successes in any athletics or hand-to-hand -hand test. Play after rolling dice. Whoa, that's powerful. I'm going to... Uh, Keep that one, and stun pen just sounds fun anyway. And I have to pick where Nikita's going to start. She has to be on an HQ, so near Cape Town or Berlin. Uh, either one sounds good. Well, here, there's a headquarters, London, right next to Berlin. That seems good to me. And sure, let's go ahead and have our encounter in Berlin. We'll only move one of our two. Uh, there's a hostage situation. We can negotiate, sneak attack, reason with them, act unconcerned, lie, or be honest. I like sneak attack with my stealth skill. So we'll go 17, 2, and we roll a die. And 4. 17, 2, 4. Your target is just below you. He stands near a door with a man in his arms and a gun to his head. An assassination attempt upon the Swedish Prime Minister turned into a three-day chase across Europe. And now you have a hostage situation. Having worked your way inside the building and onto a mezzanine, you're ready to drop in on the assassin. So we have a choice here, and you usually do. Athletics minus 1, we have 2, so that would be a 1 die test. Or hand-to-hand -hand plus one, we have one, so that'd be two. But for the athletics one, we only need one success. The uh, two in brackets here means we would need two successes with the hand-to-hand -hand one. If we had the adventuring advanced skill, we would get plus two. Then I'm going to go for the athletics one. I've got a single die, but I've also got my stun pen, so let's just go for it. Ah, and a total failure. So I'll go ahead and use the stun pen I just got to succeed anyway. So you land on your targets, knocking the hostage away and stunning the terrorist. Being a super spy never felt so good. And I get a UN transport. So these tokens let you basically teleport to any space on the board. Very useful. On top of that, I can either gain two intel or the vehicle use advanced skill. I like getting advanced skills early. Let's go for that. So I guess after saving the Swedish prime minister, the uh, Germans gave me some driving lessons at the Autobahn. And my new... Ooh, we got another one in Africa. Zanzibar. That's right next to Cape Town. So we should definitely be heading down there. And by the way, the most common way for Dr. Lobo to advance forward and make the game shorter, every time you fail a test, yes, every time you fail a test, he comes forward one space. So you uh, want to make sure you can succeed as often as possible. All right, we're up to round two. And the gadget worked out last time. Let's go for it again. All right, a pocket missile. I roll the fate die. On a one to two, I gain an intel. Three to five, I retreat Dr. Lobo one space. He'll actually gain a turn. But I have a one in six chance of actually advancing him. Or a Neurostimulator, plus two to any test. Oh, that sounds amazing. We'll keep that one. All right, I want to go down to Africa. Let's see, Zanzibar is one, two, three. But it's also an enemy headquarters, so I probably want to wait a turn and uh, let it gain an intel. Alternatively, for my first move, I could fly over to Rio, then go to the South Atlantic Ocean. And I can even spend a resolve to get right to Cape Town. I like that idea. Let's do it. I just put my resolve pretty low. I should probably rest sometime soon to get it back. We got Risky Dead Drop. Should I take charge, be lucky, unorthodox, frightened joke, trust no one. Okay, so I have stealth, I have vehicle use, I'm better at athletics. Let's go for unorthodox. 32, 3, and 4. 32, 3, 4. Intercepting a dead drop, you learn that Idi Amin is a down to attend the Conference of African Leaders? Really? He wants to develop a pan-African alliance with Smirsh. No, you need to ensure this meeting does not happen. It takes a lot of makeup, I'm not good at this, but you disguise yourself as an average looking local. Oh my gosh, test deception minus one. That would bring me to zero, but luckily the minimum is one. Uh, plus two with disguise, well, uh, let's see. You know what? <laughs> I like these uh, gadgets. Let's go ahead and roll three dice instead of one with my neuro stimulator. I guess I'm gonna stimulate my mind to be better at disguising myself. Come on, come on. Oh no, I still need to use one resolve to change this to a success, darn it. I mean, that's okay, it's not terrible, but I am getting really low here. Idi Amin never makes it to the conference, so the meeting is postponed indefinitely. Some idiot chauffeur, that's you, got lost and failed to deliver him to the right location. <laughs> Amin tells his goons to gather and shoot you, but you take off the makeup and the chauffeur is never seen again. So we gain the status Unstoppable. 
These are cool little abilities you can gain that are often just ongoing. For every injury I receive, roll a skill die. If I roll a success, ignore the injury. Wow, one third chance of not getting hurt on every injury. That is pretty amazing. Additionally, I'm going to increase my athletics by one. So I'm up to three now, nice. And then while I was in Cape Town, I recover medical nanites. Ooh, draw a gadget card or for Nikita, two and discard one. Biovision lenses, gain two successes in Spycraft or hand-to-hand -hand after. I love those after rolling the dice. Or bionic implants. When you draw this card, immediately add plus two to any one basic skill. What? Yes. Uh, let's see. Do I want to make persuasion not terrible? Or uh, no, let's go for spy craft and get like all electronic and stuff with it. And wow, I got another mission in Africa. Dakar. All right. Return a stolen artifact. I'm just going to stay here for a while. And for the first time, we're adding intel to every one of these enemy spaces. That includes Zanzibar, and remember we need intel to confront Darling, the henchman, and then it'll also aid us in our final mission against Dr. Lobo. So sure, we've got a secret mission here, let's go to Zanzibar, we get the intel no matter what. And besides fighting henchmen in the final confrontation, you'll note that each continent, when you're in that continent, you can spend intel for some effect. So for two intel, I could draw a gadget if I just had a bunch extra to burn. And speaking of gadgets, I'm not going to spend my last resolve to draw another one, I just want to take my chances here. All right, this time in Africa, I'm dealing with some double agents. Okay, so I'm still not good at disguise or uh, persuasion, so charming sounds bad. Snoop around with my stealth sounds pretty good. Um, yeah, you know what, let's try snoop around. So that's 21. And when you're in an enemy base, you never roll the die. You just always take a five, which makes it more likely you'll deal with henchmen and stuff. So we're doing 20, one, five. You don't have long to search. The microfilm must be in Darling's underwear drawer somewhere. <laughs> Suddenly, you hear a sound behind you. Hand-to-hand, -hand, minus two. Uh, ooh, but plus three with weapons, use, or speed. Oh, wait, neither of which I have. I thought it was vehicle use, so I got all excited. <laughs> so my hand-to-hand -hand is only one, so the minus two doesn't matter. I'm still going to roll one die. Although I would have to overcome the minus before I could use resolve to go above. So if I wanted to roll two dice, I'd have to spend two resolve just to kind of get past the minus two, and then one more. So uh, let's take our chances. And we've got one resolve, so if we roll a gun or a lightning bolt, we're fine. So we got a two-third chance here. Come on! Yes! So success straight up! Awesome! You turn to see Darling standing in the doorway, aghast. You hold up a pair of particularly unflattering pants. Comfort over style. I like that. Darling lunges for you, but you throw the pants at her feet and she trips, allowing you to hot-foot it out of the window with the film. Yes, to intel. And there's no other inherent bonus to defeating an encounter at Zanzibar. But we do have our secret mission. We can gain an intel, or I think that's the weapon use special skill. We got three intel already. I'm going for the uh, skill. We get a new secret mission. Undercover in a blood cult. <laughs> All right. But first, I think I'd like to go to Dakar and do another secret mission. And it'll get me another advanced skill. I only have one resolve, but we'll hopefully be okay. What have we got? Testing your limits. Okay, so we got weapon use, we got vehicle use, we got stealth, and we're best at athletics and spycraft. So maybe go for broke would fit our strengths. 12, 4. Oh, and we get a free resolve and roll again. I love it. Okay, so 12, 4, 1. The woman you've been tracking works at a construction site for a western business venture. When she sees you coming, she runs up to a driver in a semi-trailer truck, pulls him out of the cab, and takes off. As she passes, you jump up and grab onto the trailer. The road is unpaved and very bumpy. You're having trouble holding on. Okay, athletics. Oh, that's good. I have three in that. And I would pass automatically if I had adventuring or the status lucky. As it is, three dice needing one success. Oh, I got it and didn't have to spend a resolve. Excellent. You slide back and forth over the side of the trailer, grabbing the edge each time and pulling yourself up. Soon you're in the cabin and the woman is begging you not to kill her. Raise any skill. Nice. Let's see. Should I make persuasion not complete trash? Make my hand-to-hand -hand better? My deception? Let's do hand-to-hand. -hand. Then I get an advanced skill from the space. I like seduction. I'm not very persuasive, but only in certain ways. And I guess that lady also had some stolen artifacts. I can gain two intel. That would get me already up to enough to defeat Darling or one gadget card. I like my gadget ability. Let's do that. So again, I draw two. Voice changer. Two successes in deception or persuasion, both of which I'm terrible at. That's really good. Or refracting cloak. Two in deception or spycraft. I'm pretty good at spycraft, so I'm going to go for the voice changer here. Uh, new secret missions in Rome, Operation Manticore. One intel or two injuries. That's pretty weak. I don't know if I really need that. And we're going into round five. Even more intel to grab? 
You know, I've got a secret mission in Macau, and then Beijing's right there with two intel, so I think I'm going to use my UN transport to fly straight over there. All right, the mission is run! <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm good at running, right, in athletics. I'm just going to go for broke. Yeah, let's do it. 19, uh, 4, 5. Uh-oh. You head from Macau to Indonesia in hot pursuit of a lead. You run through a crowded market during the Kasada Festival near the Bromo Volcano. People bring offerings to appease the holy mountain and keep it from erupting for another year. You, however, are there for a different reason. An exchange of Soviet atomic secrets is occurring near the foot of the mountain, and you must make sure the meeting does not happen. Unfortunately, you were delayed on your way and are now riding at full gallop toward the volcano on a hired horse. Awesome. Oh, and look at this. <laughs> Athletics minus two, so my three becomes a one, but plus two with vehicle use. I have three dice going down, horsey. Or no, I guess going up the mountain because it's my horse. Yes. All right, I have no fear here. Oh, no. I do have to spend one resolve to get the success I need because I didn't get any guns. But no worries, no worries. I've got it to spend, barely. You cling onto the horse tightly as you navigate up the slippery slope. In a final leap, you reach solid ground again. The path is now mostly clear. The Soviets see you from the cafe and get up to leave. You throw yourself from the horse and take down the agent carrying the briefcase. Status improviser. See, if Dr. Globo would advance, discard this card to cancel that advancement. And you take two injuries. Uh, so, I mean, hopefully I never fail a test to have to use this, but it's good to have. Especially with my unstoppable meaning I might not take those injuries in the first place. Ooh, and I'm getting plus one hand-to-hand. -hand. Nice. I am very leveled. This is good. I, mean, I can gain an intel or deception, but I'm about to get some more intel. So let's uh, get my deception up higher. Persuasion is my only terrible one now. Okay, now if I get to Mexico City, I can gain an intel or place two on an HQ, and then I can go pick it up. Interesting. All right, we're going to round six. And by the way, at the end of any round, after I've had my encounters, or all players have their encounters in a co-op game, we can choose to encounter Darling and deal with her if we have at least four intel. So I want to do that before uh, Dr. Lobo gets reached, of course. All right, we're so close. Let's move over to Beijing and get two intel. We've now got one more than enough to defeat Darling, or at least uh, take her on, I should say. It's a daring infiltration. Okay, so I have stealth. I have seduction. Let's see. Uh, maybe let's have some fun? Sure. 13, 6, and then 5 because it's the base. You scale the outer wall of Jingxi's palace and jump onto a ledge, already dressed for a party. You grab a glass of champagne and head for General Xi. Taking his empty glass, you hand him yours and congratulate him on a splendid party. You then drift over to the band and request a particularly rousing number. As the dancing begins, you make your way to Xi's safe, which has a thumbprint lock. Okay, so Spycraft minus two. Man, even with my three, it's still only one. Or Deception minus two is also one. I don't have lock picking. Oof. Ooh, but I've got my voice changer that can add two successes to a deception test. So let's do deception with one die, and we can pass no matter what if things don't go. Well, never mind! We are all over it! You take the general's print from his glass with a specially coated piece of paper and press it to the lock. You take the documents from the open, safe, and run. Oh, place one intel in Beijing? That's kind of weird, so I gotta, like, <laughs> stay here another turn to actually get it. I don't know if that's really worth it. I'm probably gonna go to some other intel places. Well, you know, I've got that mission in Mexico City. Why don't we head to North America? So I'll go uh, through Tokyo, and I'll stop off in the Pacific Ocean. I'll show you an ocean encounter. I can get an advanced skill if I pass. All right, secret on the high seas. Negotiate, sneak attack, reason with, act on concern, lie, be honest. I mean, sneak attack, right? I've got weapon use. I've got stealth. I've got really good hand-to-hand -hand skill. Uh, let's do it. So 48, 2, 3. 48, 2, 3. The UN believes a German now living in the States was once a chemist who worked for the Nazis. Smirsch has been recruiting Nazis around the world, and the UN wants to get to the man before Dr. Lobo does. The FBI have previously cleared him of any wrongdoing, but you're not bound by any law, especially not here in the middle of the ocean. You're caught off guard when you break into his cabin and he's waiting for you. He ties you to a chair, what? And boasts of the experiments he's conducting for Smirsch. You sit calmly without responding. This reminds me of uh, <laughs> Black Widow in the beginning of the first Avengers movie. All right, so Spycraft is three for me, or Athletics plus two is five. Oh, no bonuses. So five dice needing two successes, three dice needing one. That's definitely better. Spycraft is up. Yes, one success. You work at your bonds and slowly inch your way out of the ropes over a period of some hours. When the moment comes, you lunge at the German and fight the old man as a formidable fighter, but no match for you. I get the tough status. Okay, geez, I'm never gonna die. Plus two injuries. <laughs> And I have Unstoppable, which means that it's hard for me to even get hurt. And Improviser to take some damage to stop Dr. Lobo. Looking pretty good. My space gets me an advanced skill, huh? Let's do uh, Adventuring, maybe? 
Okay, we're adding even more intel, and then we're almost to Dr. Lobo. So I'm thinking uh, maybe at the end of, not this turn, but after I go to Mexico City and then to the other base. So yeah, like at the end of uh, turn 9 at 10, we can go get him. I'm at a ton of intel over here at the Yukon. And then again, I have the uh, mission at Mexico City, although is that the weak one? No, that gets me two intel and HQ. Oh, and it levels up my uh, talking, my persuasion, which is the only one I'm terrible at. So yeah, let's go here first and then have to the Yukon next. Okay, we've got Burn After Reading, good movie. Um, let's see, let's have some fun at all costs. Uh, quick action, quick action sounds good for me. 10, two, and oh, five, 10 to five. We're working 10 to five. A uh, UN agent posing as a parking attendant hands over the keys to your new car. You get inside and a video screen pops up. Hello, agent. The Prime Minister of Israel is on a state visit. Your security pass and ID papers are in the glove compartment. The message suddenly fizzles out, but you think you know why. Sabotage! And your brakes are not working either! The car is coasting down an incline toward a line of cars waiting at a red light. You honk your horn and wave your arms! Oh, but this is going to be easy. Look at this. Athletics minus one and plus two with vehicle use. Three down to two, plus two more, four dice, one success, I think not, break line. Do, 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 do. Whoa, that was actually kind of close, I got one success though. You swerve around the cars and narrowly miss an 18-wheeler. Ahead of you is a sharp curve and a woman pushing a baby stroller's crossing. You honk but she doesn't hear, so you head for the cliff, jumping out just before the car goes over. Well, what about uh, the minister, the prime minister of Israel? Uh, anyway, status unstoppable. You can't get the same one again, so I don't get to do anything, but I do get to raise any skill. And I'm getting persuasion from my space, so sure, let's shore up our weakness. And I can gain one intel or put two on an HQ. I actually might go to an HQ to rest and get all my resolve back, so let's do that option. Although, do I have time to do that? I guess we'll see. Oh, you know what? Yes, I do, because I don't need to go to the Yukon anymore. I can just go to Las Vegas, uh, get the two stuff, and then in my next turn, I'll rest before I take on Darling. So I am deep undercover. We'll try sneak attack again. It didn't work out too great for us last time. 31 to... 31 to 1. You've been undercover inside a drug cartel for months. Oh, those Las Vegas drug cartels. But have made very little headway. You're starting to suspect that the cartel does not have any links with Smirsh. That night, however, a bag is jammed over your head from behind. Why do they keep on capturing me? <laughs> I mean, let's get real. That's in every spy movie ever. And you are injected with a sedative. You wake up in what seems to be a field. As you come to, you realize that it's actually an arena. Suddenly, it is lit with blinding light and a crowd cheers. You hear a rumbling sound behind you and turn to see dozens of bulls charging towards you. <laughs> the crowd goes wild. But uh, athletics plus two, pass with adventuring. I'm going to have to roll. I am like trained in bull fighting, I guess. Let's do this. You run like you have never run before, the rumbling getting faster and faster. In front of you is a stone wall at least 12 feet high. You jump, your hands barely grasping over the, onto the edge, and pull yourself up just as a bull attempts to gore your leg. Good try, buddy. So that is awesome. That's awesome. I'm going to get my deception up. And then the final round, we have to confront Darling at the end of this round. Otherwise, we would pass uh, Dr. Lobo and have to confront him instead. And all I'm going to do is rest. I would increase my injuries by two, but yeah, right. And I would normally just increase my resolve by two, my little rest value here. But remember, we're on HQ, so we are ready to go, man. So a fun little detail besides the upgraded components for the new Epic Edition is that they have these epic showdowns with the henchmen and with Dr. Lobo at the end. So uh, the prototype only has the one for Darling and uh, Dr. Lobo's version when you're facing Darling. Let's see how it goes. Your confidential informant has given you the location of Darling, stating if you want to catch her off guard, she will be attending a gala hosted by one of her tech companies. The event is supposedly a cover for the underworld's most nefarious crime lords and villains, and possibly other members of Smirsh. You could infiltrate the gala in hopes of catching and confronting Darling there, or perhaps it's better to stay in the shadows and ambush her after the gala is over. And by the way, this is a small errata in the prototype, they already told me about it. Uh, these have the wrong numbers. So if I ambush her, it's 2, and if I listen and infiltrate the gala, it's 10. Let's uh, do some ambushing. You don't trust the intel from your CI. You smell an ambush. Instead of exposing yourself to the gala, you decide to ambush the ambushers, there's a lot of ambushing, <laughs> by infiltrating Darling's penthouse suite and waiting for her to arrive after the party ends. You walk into the lobby and the concierge greets you immediately, as if you were expected. Doesn't sound good. He presses a button and a door to a private elevator opens behind him. Without waiting for a response, he says, She doesn't like to be kept waiting. As he points to the elevator, you walk in and there's only one button, a big gold oval button that says penthouse. You press the button, the door is closed, and you feel the elevator going up. Then it suddenly comes to a halt. You can hear the hiss of air being forced through a tube from somewhere. By the way, this is the one other errata that they said for the prototype. 
Uh, they put all of the uh, successes you need one too high. And yeah, my first few plays before they told me that, I was like getting destroyed by these people. So it definitely makes it easier. So I need two successes. I have three spycraft skill, but I don't have electronic or detection. But don't forget I can spend resolve to get extra dice. And also I spend four intel to confront Darling, but extra intel in the fight against both the henchman and Dr. Lobo can also be spent as resolve. So I'll just kind of like put it here for now. Oh, you know what? I realized I had one resolve before I rested. I would have got it all back anyway. So let's say I use my ability to get two uh, gadgets, because why not? Spend one resolve to gain one intel. That doesn't really matter. Or heal injuries. not going to get hurt, I don't think. Oh, man, really? Two of those? Well, <laughs> that's basically useless. Ah, well. So anyway, back to the game. I'm going to spend uh, one resolve to get up to four dice. I need two successes. Oof, okay. I need another resolve to change that. Then I'm good. You immediately identify where the sound is coming from and pull out your instant foam canister to quickly obstruct the flow of air into the elevator. You silently thank R&D in your head. It dawns on you. Not only does Darling know you are coming, but she has surprises in store you can't let your guard down. And it says add a success token to her henchman sheet. And these will be checked at the end of the encounter. They might, like, help me actually defeat her. And also they'll kind of determine what sort of ending I get with her. And on a three, the elevator hums back to life and continues up the shaft to the penthouse level. The doors open and two men in suits quickly lose the smile on their faces. They seem surprised to see you standing there. And now is your only chance to stop them from alerting anyone about your presence. Time to start cracking skulls. Oh, this one I got. So it goes down to hand-to-hand -hand one success, not two. Remember the errata I said. And I have three... You got no chance, boys! Yeah, there we go. One gun's all I need. You quickly step out and judo chop! <laughs> For those Austin Powers fans, one of the men in the neck. Delivering a precise blow that knocks him out cold. The other man attempts to strike you, but you are too ready for it. You dodge the attack and respond back with an elbow to the jaw. Boosh! The man drops. You search their pockets and find a gold key card with an engraving that reads Penthouse. Yeah, we do. Only one door on this floor at the end of this small hallway. With nowhere else to go, you make your way to it. Another success token on to four. You approach the Penthouse door and immediately engage your sonic voice identifier. There's a quick high-pitched squeal as it activates. Through the door, you hear a few voices talking in jovial tones. You ready yourself, roll your neck, and use the key card, and you hear the audible beep and click of the lock allowing you to enter. You slowly open the door and see Darling laughing with a few of her lackeys. She begins to say, Bring the body here so I can... Then stop short when she realizes, You're not her guards carrying your corpse in. I'm carrying their corpses in. Maybe. <laughs> she looks you directly in the eyes for just a second, then smirks and flutters her eyes at you. She whispers, Get them. These final showdowns involve all the players, and you can kind of, like, choose which one takes each challenge. That's super fun, but it does mean, like, you get sort of, like, this weirdness of pronouns. Like you said, get them, which I guess uh, maybe just uh, Darling is very forward-thinking and doesn't really judge by gender. <laughs> or it could be uh, for more than one person, but hey, it's just me. As her goons sprint toward you, she casually saunters out of the room, laughing lightly at some private joke. You didn't think there were eight goons in here, but you faced worse before. You can't let Darling escape, but you must go through them first. Okay, so this is a double test, and I have to pass both or it doesn't matter. So Persuasion, again, it's only one, and then Deception. Persuasion's only two, Deception's three, but I think I got it. Let's go. Persuade the guards, and no, I didn't. Oh, crud. Oh, man. Ooh, ooh, I got a voice changer. Ha, 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 ha. So we'll say that I'm like, uh, I changed my voice to be Darling's voice, and I'm like, wait, I didn't want you to get her. And then they'll be confused, and while they're confused, I will deceive them. Three dice. Gosh, okay, I'll spend another resolve. I'm down to two, but I succeed. You pull out a lighter from your pocket and shout, Stop or else! The goons come to a screeching halt as you tell the men it's a chemical mixture that will melt the skin off their bodies in three seconds. You tell them you're not here for them. You only want Darling. If they let you pass right now, you won't turn them into walking skeletons. <laughs> the men panic and back away slowly, allowing you to continue after Darling. Another success. Awesome. You burst through the door into a lavish bedroom, but there's no sign of Darling, only an open window and a grappling hook attached to the bed. Looking out the window to the street below, you catch a glimpse of Darling, blowing you a kiss as she revs up her convertible supercar and peels off away from the hotel. I think not. You close your eyes for a moment, take a deep breath. When you open your eyes, you see a blinking light over on the nightstand. There's one new message. You press a button and hear a strange robotic voice say, Amalfi Mansion. You hit the receiver and dial up HQ. Need a flight to Italy. Female voice replies confirmed and the line goes dead. 
You hang up, head to the roof where a UN transport chopper is waiting, and in less than 24 hours, you're back on Darling's heels, following that robotic voice was spot on as you peer through your sniper's scope. There she is, barking at a bunch of goons, bringing priceless artwork into an elaborate mansion off the Amalfi Coast, Italy. You smile to yourself. I know it's Italy. I'm already in Italy. <laughs> you smile to yourself through the scope. It would be so easy to take her out now, but you need to find Lobo, and she's your only real lead. She looks over her shoulder, smiling in your direction before entering the house, closing the ornate doors behind her, the jerk. You leave the rifle and stealthily move towards an open window of the estate. Okay, so athletics, I need one, and then spycraft. Ooh, plus two to both with stealth. I am a ninja. So that is five, and then five. Yeah, I didn't think I had trouble with that one. This is my element, baby. Beautiful. With a quick running start, you hop up into the window frame and gracefully pull yourself inside the house. You hear footsteps approaching your direction and hide in a corner of the room. A woman wearing a white dress with long white boots walks past without seeing you. Now's your chance. As you leap out to cut her off from escape, she screams, and even before you see her face, you know this isn't darling. Use a tranquilizer on the woman and knock her out safely. Sorry, lady. As you hear the sounds of at least a dozen or more people running in your direction. You hop back out of the window, and once again, you see Darling's red convertible going full speed. Give me a break. But this time, it's driving straight toward you. You dive out of the way, and it barely misses you. She screams back, come get me, laughing as she speeds down the road. Darling is trying to get away, and you can't let her. You run over to one of the other cars, parked in the driveway, and quickly hotwired and give chase. Okay, add another success token. This is great. And counter six, you follow Darling, slowly gaining on her. You can hear her loud music and barely make out the annoying smirk on her face that she's constantly flashing at you through her rearview mirror. Just as you're ready to make a move, you hear a helicopter overhead and see a ladder roll down into Darling's passenger seat. Are you kidding me? You don't want her to get away again, so you put the pedal to the metal and ram the back of her car. All right, so spy cast, I would have needed two successes, but with vehicle, you only need one. Excellent, and I have three dice. I'm your vehicle, baby. Yes, I'll take you anywhere you want to go. Wait, wait, I needed two successes. So I need to spend one resolve. Okay. I'm going to show you where we are. We're at one. You ram Darling's car and it swerves off the road and crashes. But unfortunately, Darling is already holding onto the ladder and rising up in the air. She taunts you again with that devilish smile of hers as she disappears off into the distance. A payphone nearby starts ringing. Knowing it can't be a coincidence, you walk over and answer. It's the director. Agent, we have intel. Darling will be going to a safe house. I will send you the location immediately. Stand by. An electronic notification appears on your watch with the coordinates. This time, you can't let her get away. I mean, maybe I can, but I'm not going to try. Okay, you approach a nearby winery's warehouse under the cover of night. Your intel shows Darling returning here routinely over the past few months. There are well-armed security guards all over this area, betraying the rural backdrop. Something is definitely going on here. After reporting to the director, he tells you about a hidden way in. You ask him how he found out about it, and he simply says, There's no time. We'll talk when the mission is over. What? <laughs> you approach the metal grate on the back of the warehouse, subduing two guards on the way. You enter the large drain pipe after using your pocket blowtorch to cut through the huge rusted iron lock. You make your way through the rat-infested, stench-filled tunnel until you come to a ladder. It leads up and into a state-of-the-art building that looks nothing like this on the outside. It resembles a scientific manufacturing plant or research center on the inside, and a winery's warehouse on the outside. As you make your way through the lower level, avoiding guards and cameras, you come across a staff locker room. Might be a good idea to find a disguise, oh man, and blend in as you scour the place. So, test deception, I need two successes. Uh, with disguise, I only need one, but I don't have disguise, darn it. I also don't have much resolve left, so I'm just going to go for it, come on. No, I fail. Now, you don't advance Dr. Lobo on these kind of failures, but it might just hurt me. You look in a locker, and one of the lab workers enters. Hey, Bill, get over to Lab 4 ASAP so we can run the synthesizing protocol. Thinking fast, you say, just finishing lunch. The worker turns his head toward you slowly and suspiciously. We just got back from lunch, Bill. Still hungry? You're really getting out of shape, you know. Whoa. Wait, wait, wait. Why is Nikita being mistaken for an out-of-shape lab worker? Come on now. He trails off as he takes a closer look at you and shouts, Hey, you're not Bill! You sucker punch him, knocking him out with a crash against the metal lockers. Take that for body shaving me, sir. You begin to stuff him into one when a guard patrol walks in chatting. They spot you stuffing the scientist in Bill's locker and say, <laughs> What's going on here, Bill? The guards look at each other and then back at you. You're not Bill! Can we sucker punch them too? They run over to attack you. You trap the lab worker to take down the guards as quickly as you can. After a locker room scuffle, you look at Bill's ID card and realize apparently you look nothing like Bill. You change into one of the security guard uniforms. Luckily it has a helmet because you're obviously not this guy. You run out and try to locate Darling. 
You hear over the guards radio that she's on her way to Lab 13. You exit the locker room and make your way down the hall, find the stairwell, and make your way there. Oh, we lower deception. Oh, man, so now it's down to two, permanently. And then we advance. Yeah, like I said, these things are pretty epic. As you approach Lab 13, you overhear Darling arguing with someone. I need it now! There's not much time, she pleads. A strange voice responds, It's not ready. It's only a prototype. Darling presses him further. There's only one way to test it out. I can handle it. But those UN agents won't be able to. She laughs as if she told the joke of the year. The strange voice gives in. I can't resist you, darling. It will only take a minute. I will start the process. You hear mechanical doors slide shut and keystrokes on a keyboard. You kick open the door, revealing a man in a hazmat suit at a computer terminal. He looks up directly at you. He raises his hand above his head and slowly and dramatically brings it down upon the enter key, causing klaxons and lights to go off in the lab and who knows what else. It looks like you are too late, he says. Too late? Too late for what? Ooh, we need persuasion too. We only have two persuasion. We don't have electronics. I don't want to spend my last uh, resolve because this is not the final test and I still have to go against Lobo. Ah, man, that was close. Ah, that would have been enough. Oh, well. The man robotically starts rambling on about some new polymer technology they're working on to revolutionize the industry. He keeps talking until the computer makes a sound. He glances at the screen and looks back at you with a smug smirk on his face. You can see through his face shield. It is complete, he says. He runs out of the room after pressing a button. You are too slow in approaching the terminal as he releases a crane above you, causing metal tanks to crash down on you. You're pinned momentarily and struggle to get out from under this mess when you see Darling laughing at you. She raises one hand and you see a green hot laser whip flash from her fingernail above her head with a crackling crack. Crackling crack as it hits one of the tanks on you, cutting it in half, releasing you. I've been really looking forward to meeting you. I'm Darling. All spies take two injuries, advance to encounter nine. If we were defeated, we would just go right to a conclusion. What's that? Injuries? Injuries, you say? Ah, you take only one, and I have a six life, so, hmm. I guess I'll, like, put this here to show five, and then I'll bring it down to four. Darling is admiring her nails as she approaches you. Now this is an upgrade, and so are you. I was getting so bored. She seductively looks up from her nails to you. Through her evil grin, she says, I'm going to. She pauses and looks into your eyes. Try to kill you. Darling gets into a fighting stance, takes two fingers from her right hand, and grabs her middle finger on her left hand. She then pulls her hands apart from one another, and what can only be described as a green glowing laser wire whip, I always thought we already saw that, is now extending from her middle finger. She laughs maniacally and tries to keep her promise. Okay, so we get hand to hand, we need two, not three, we have three. Plus one with weapon use, we have that, so that's four. Plus one with seduction? <laughs> We're doing like seductive fighting? So five dice against two, I feel good about that. Okay, and what I need? I need two. Got him. Darling closes the distance, then whips the laser whip at you, narrowly missing your face. You flip kick one of the desks in the room at her, and she uses the whip to cut it cleanly in half. You see the man in the hazmat suit on a screen nearby, looking on as Darling plays with her new toy. You hunted me all over the world. Well, I'm right here. Come and get me. You circle Darling, getting closer, and say, Am I supposed to be afraid of one of your nails on a string? She responds, you tell me, and whips the wire at you as you dive down. The wire strikes the computer, sending a huge electric shock back to Darlin. Take that. For a split second, you see through her, each and every bone in her body. You smell a strange burning. Sorry, lady, as her smile fades from her face and she falls to one knee. You advance to take her down, but she falls before you get there. Taking no chances, you step on her wrist to make sure she can't use that thing against you. Okay, add a success token, and... If you have four more successes, we do advance to conclusion A. Uh, if we didn't, we'd go to the bad one. Darling finally goes limp and says, I give up. You win. She lays on the ground looking up at you, her nails smoking, her head twitching. You pull out a gun and aim it at her, but she makes no move or reaction. Where's Dr. Lobo? You bark at her. She smiles a bloody smile. He just left. Confused, you say, what do you mean he just left? She looks at a terminal. What? You don't know him. He's the one who upgraded me. You just met him. <gasps> the guy in the suit. You look back at the screen for the man in the hazmat suit and it shuts off and he is gone. He got away. Darling coughs up blood and wipes her mouth with her other hand. I finally did too much work to myself. I guess Lobo was right. The upgrade wasn't ready. She smiles at you and says, you know what the worst part is? We just met. She coughs up more blood. I worked with Lobo because he said he would tell me where my dad was. Confused, you blurt out, your dad? What does he have to do with it? Where's Lobo going? Darling takes a gurgling breath and reaches in her pocket. She pulls out a computer chip and reaches toward you to hand it to you. As you take it, she coughs up blood again and her hand drops. Darling is dead. 
You examine her nails. No wonder these things are so sharp. They aren't even human. The wire extending from her middle finger doesn't have a glow anymore, and now it just looks like a metal string. If what Darling said was true, he was here, and you let him get away. You have to find him. Hopefully Dr. FX can figure out what's on this chip and fast. I guess that's our cue. You take another sad glance over to Darling, wondering if there could have been another way. You shake off the feeling and sprint out of the lab to get back to HQ as soon as possible. Okay, I would gain the advanced skill electronics and now be able to face Lobo, but we're going to stop there because these are like a lot of fun to experience and I don't want to uh, spoil one of the Lobo encounters that's in the game since I imagine it won't change too much uh, after the prototype. So in the epic battle, Nikita versus Darling, I think we know who the winner is. Defeated. Get out of here, lady. So that was Agents of Smirsh. If you'd like to hear my thoughts on the game from what I've played in the prototype so far, just hang on. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the basics of your turn and the board movement. I think it is just simple enough for the purpose of the game. You're really here to have the choose your own adventures. So the very simple choices of movement, the uh, intel tokens and the secret missions giving you places to go, the fact that you can level up and you know how you'll level up, I think all that works really well and it keeps you focused. You don't just kind of like amble around wildly and also encourages you to go to different continents and have different adventures. I also want to call it the components. This is just a prototype, but I mean, if it looks like this, this is really nice stuff. Again, like these little boards you can uh, move up and like put your character in. That's awesome. The spiral bound books are super high quality. So all the components look great, at least based on the prototype. Now, in terms of the little stories and the tests themselves, this is basically the same as the original Agents of Smirsh, from what I remember, because I played it years ago. And it's also a lot like Tales of the Arabian Nights, the game that clearly inspired it. But I think the basic mechanics work well, of course, as long as you like Choose Your Own Adventure in narrative games. Like having the little theme names, you have a hint of what you might need, and the choices. The fact that every single choice in these cards has like five options for the actual adventure you have. Uh, tons of replayability, like I did not see a single adventure repeated in any of my four plays of this, so that's a pretty good sign. And you definitely do get the sense in the game of like leveling up and getting stronger. Now that is one place where I would caution people with the game. This is definitely one that can have the rich get richer or poor get poorer thing. Every time you fail a test, Dr. Lobo is going to take out an entire turn you have to prepare. And when you succeed, you get your skills up, you get the advanced skills, more likely to continue succeeding in tests. So uh, it's not a big deal because the game is mostly about the fun and the theme and the narrative. But if you're looking for like great balance, the game will tend to swing one way or the other. Though I do want to give credit for the resolve mechanic, the fact that you can spend that to get extra dice in tests or to change one third of the die faces into successes, I definitely feel like as long as I manage this well, I can really make sure that I succeed on the big tests I care about. So that's uh, definitely pretty cool. And kind of on the same topic, I like the different characters, I like the gadgets, uh, I like the advanced skills, like all the little things you get and the status cards. It uh, definitely makes you feel like you're kind of like special and have cool skills each time you play. As for the adventures themselves, I enjoy them. They're just like little discreet, quick little adventures. I think that's fun. Now, you know, be aware if you're looking for some kind of cohesive, connected narrative. You do get that in the final showdown, like you saw at the end of the playthrough, but you don't really get that in these random ones. You have to sort of connect the dots and, you know, explain why you're suddenly driving the prime minister around or why you're suddenly rescuing this hostage. Now, since you're just a spy, I think it all kind of connects because, of course, you're going around and doing super cool heroic things. But uh, some people might be bothered by that. But another potential warning on this point, especially if you're going to play with three or four players, you need to enjoy hearing these stories. I think they're super fun, even when it's not my turn, just like kind of listening to what crazy stuff happens to people. But clearly, if you aren't really into listening to stories, uh, one or two player work best for you. Because with two players, one of you is reading, the other one is making the choices. Uh, with one player, you have to do everything. So, you know, if you are easily bored by <laughs> listening to narrative, uh, then you might want to avoid this for three or four players. And finally, I do want to give a shout out to the new Epic Showdowns. I think these are super cool. Now, the one caveat is that I think there's going to be two different paths of showdowns for each henchman, and then one Lobo path for each henchman. What you saw was uh, one of basically the three things that could be connected to the easy difficulty that I was playing. So eventually, after playing the game like eight or 10 or 12 times, you'll have uh, theoretically seen all of them. 
I don't know if that will take away the fun or not, and certainly all of these encounters are still different. But for example, I had played the showdown I showed you before and was kind of like acting surprised <laughs> when I knew stuff was sort of happening. But, you know, it's all in good fun. But I think the actual epic showdowns, uh, they definitely give you that like cohesive narrative that some people might be missing with the other encounters. And uh, I like all the choices there. They tend to be tougher. Uh, shepherding your resources and like saving them to defeat the boss. Uh, definitely cool stuff. Especially the Lobo one, which I didn't show you. That gets super hairy and super tough. Uh, I have lost most of the games I've played. All right, so there you go. That was Agents of Smirsh. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, it should be on Kickstarter soon. So go check out the page. Good gaming, everyone. And I'll see you at the next stop.